We're stuck out here with nothing to do, but when we get back, I'm gonna strip search all of you. And then she went. Hi loves, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. Before I get started, I just wanna show you, I'm eating a rice cake with avocado, green pepper, spices, and lime. And last time Adam called, I was eating the same thing, and he's like, that sounds disgusting. And I go, Okay, like you gotta say, prison food. 20 years of prison, glop, slop, whatever you wanna call it, and you're gonna talk about my delicious rice cake and avocado. I'm getting ready to enjoy that, okay? Okay. That is not what this video is about. I have a really fun story for you guys. So, throughout a lot of the summer and throughout a lot of time on my channel, I've talked about prison corruption, I've talked about dirty and corrupt correctional officers, and I always want to give credit where it's due. I love to meet people who are going against the grain, who are living against stigma. I think I'm living proof that we all don't fit within a little box, that you can live outside, above, and beyond stigma, and be a really good, good-hearted person, despite a lot of other people trying to pull you in the opposite direction. Just like Adam is not a typical inmate. I'm not a typical prison wife. This woman is not a typical correctional officer. So I am, oh, I am so excited to share her story with you. She reached out to me to tell me her technique that she calls the trouble technique. And I talked about it on a live video, but basically what she does is when her inmates are acting out, when something is either happening or about to happen, then she yells the word trouble. She said she picked the word trouble because trouble is about to happen or if you don't knock it off, you're gonna get in trouble. And so all of the inmates know when they hear her yelling trouble, they have to line up and then they address the situation. Now, is it gonna work every single time? No, there are times that guys are fighting and it gets heated and they're not gonna stop for anything. Not somebody yelling at them, not somebody trying to pull them off of each other, not even being pepper sprayed sometimes. But in most instances, in both, in both, in most instances, this has helped. So they, started calling her officer trouble and they even started doing trouble drills just to practice for when it really happens. Such a cool technique. She asked me what I thought about it. I was like, girl, that is amazing. That's so smart. She wanted to be able to give them a chance before they wind up in the hole, before they wind up being written up, getting extra time, losing privileges, etc. So sweet. So I thought that was amazing. She sent me the coolest story that I just needed to share with you guys. So this happened when she was very early on in her career. It was one of her first weeks there. I believe she's in the South. I think down near Florida, I think. I could be wrong, but I think that's what she said. She was working in the women's facility at that point. And so part of the job was some of the women earned the privilege of being able to go outside and to clean up the community. They would go to parks, they would go to beaches, and they would either build stuff, they would paint, they would clean, they would pick up trash, that kind of thing. And she said she loved it for two reasons. One, because the inmates got to get out, they got to work towards something that earned them more privileges, and two, they were able to give back in a good way. It started them on a positive direction and path in life. So she said that was one of her first experiences and it was one of her favorite things to do and to this day it was one of her favorite things to do with the women inmates while they were inside and she said she loved to try to make it fun for them part of the rules was they would have to march in a cadence so she would let them sing songs she would let them make up songs while they were marching while they were doing their cadences and everybody started to love officer trouble you're stuck in jail and she's stuck in jail working then you might as well make the best experience of it for everybody involved. What a doll, what a saint, because most people that work in there, unfortunately, are trying to flex their power muscles, abuse their power, and make the inmates' lives a living hell. So she's such a breath of fresh air for me to hear these stories and for me to pass them along to you, to instill your faith that there are still good people out there and good people who could work in the DOC or the BOP. So this one day, 
one of her first experiences in this new job, she is on duty to take the women out to go clean up the beach. While they're there doing it, they're having fun, they were singing their cadences, the facility winds up going on lockdown. Something happened at the facility, there was a fight or something, and when the facility is locked down, she told me that nobody can leave the prison and nobody can come in. So the warden called or the captain called and they said, hey, it's on you. You got to entertain them until this is over. Figure it out. Click. And she was like, she said that she was anxious. She was nervous. She didn't know what to do. And she didn't have any cuffs with her. So what she did was she told all the girls to go sit down and she had them all link arms under and over. And then when the hands went through, I can't show you because I don't have somebody else here, but basically they wove their hands through each other and they connected hands like this and they held hands in a big circle. So this way, basically she said she didn't have to cuff them because she didn't have the cuffs, but she was able to keep her eye on all of them. And if somebody tried to escape, it would be more difficult for them to get out because they were all kind of just interlocked. First of all, amazing idea. She said she was super anxious. The inmates could kind of tell something was going on, but they didn't know what. And she's like, we're just going to hang out here. There's something going on. We have to wait for it to resolve. She was so nervous during all of this that she said she went off. She tried to hide, but they could see her. And she didn't realize it at the time, but she smoked a couple of cigarettes. How sweet is she? To this day, she's like, do you think that that was mean of me? Do you think that I was doing something wrong by smoking cigarettes in front of girls who probably would die for a cigarette? And what I told her back was, Absolutely not. If it calmed your nerves and it helped you stay on top of this situation, as long as you weren't taunting them, like, look at me, look what I could do and you can't <sighs> blowing smoke in their faces, you're fine, girl. You handled this amazing. Good for you. And the girls didn't care. She said they could tell that she was stressed and needed the down. So she said that they were making up their cadences and they were singing and then they kind of passed it around and they were making up this rhyme and then they threw it to her. And the last line that she said was, I needed to take a bite while I remembered the cadence that she made up. So cute. Not smart move though, because I'm gonna have food in my teeth. So she said, they threw it to her to, to come up with the last line. And she said, what came to the top of her mind, the first thing she thought of was, we're stuck out here with nothing to do, but when we get back, I'm gonna strip search all of you. And then she was like, ooh, should I have not said that? And it was quiet for a minute. And then she said, all of a sudden, all at the same time, all of the girls started roaring with laughter. They thought it was the funniest thing they ever heard. And so they're laughing. They're having a good time. They're still all human cuffed to one another. She called back to the facility. They were able to send her some cuffs. So she cuffed them together in couples. Finally, they were able to get this lockdown lifted. Whatever happened was resolved and she was able to bring them back to the facility. They were all having such a good time that she said when she got back and she did that strip search, it was the least awkward strip search of her whole entire career because they were having fun with one another. They were having a great time. She was letting the girls have as much fun and as much quote unquote freedom as they possibly could, although there was not much freedom there, but she was just rolling with it. She was, working with them, not against them. I mean, I've been in situations where I've been at visit and a cop has tapped Adam and said something along the lines of, don't make it difficult for me. I won't make it difficult for you. He wasn't even doing anything, but I think he had his hand on my leg or something. It wasn't that type of a thing. Like I'm going to work with you by abusing my power. You're not working with me. You're just showing me who's boss. You're exercising your authority. You're trying to make believe that you're working with me, but what are you working with me? Because I'm not working against you in any way, dude. But she wasn't like that. She was genuinely trying to make them have a good time and make the best out of a crap experience. She was making lemons out of lemonade, for lack of a better term. So I'm so excited for her to share more stories with me so I can pass them along to you guys because I love to give credit where it's due. I love to be the person that exposes people who are going against the grain and not taking that dumb feeling cute challenge. Remember, she is adorable in her own way. And girl, you are sweet. You are cute. You are, oh, 
amazing. She asked me one time, she's like, you have such a good personality and you command so much respect with your voice. You should be a CEO. And I was like, ah, scratch the record. Uh, uh, <laughs> not the job for me. I'm a pushover. I want to be everybody's friend. I do not like when people don't like me. I don't want to go inside of jail any more than I have to go inside of jail. And I don't even know that the BOP would let me go back into prison to visit Adam if I was a correctional officer. I don't know if that's true or not, but it is not the job for me. I promise I will help people with reentry. I will help their family. Like this is what I live for because I love it and because I have so much experience with it, but I will draw the line at that. I can't. I am in such awe and I have so much admiration and respect and love for not only Officer Trouble, who I would love to have on my channel one day, but I will continue to share her stories, but also for everybody else inside who is just treating our loved ones like people, who is like, come on, really, let's just work together. We're both stuck here, so let's make the best of this. If you're gonna be respectful towards me, I will be respectful of you, and we're gonna make it work. I had a cop tell me one time she was such a doll. I was having a bad day. They just changed the rules. And for the six, seven years that I had been going before this, you were allowed to wear open-toed shoes. You could wear flip-flops if you wanted to. You could wear slides. It didn't matter. As long as you had a shoe on your foot, didn't matter what it was, they would let you in. They, they decided to change the rules without letting anybody know that you couldn't wear open-toed shoes that weekend. According to the cops, they were like, well, the inmates were told to tell their family members. Do you think the inmates wouldn't have told their family members if they knew? Of course they would, because they want them to come in to visit. They didn't want to make it any more difficult on us than it already is. The memo was missed by somebody. The ball was dropped by somebody. Who? I have an idea. I'm sure you can guess, but we won't say it. Anyway, I was wearing high waist black skinny jeans with a black t-shirt and then this really pretty kimono that had this very Asian inspired detail. It was black and white and red. It was gorgeous and it had this thin outline around it. It was like a silk material and it was maxi. It was actually a little bit too long. So I had to wear these really high heels. I still love them. They almost look like, Adam says they look like a roller skate front. Remember when those Jeffrey Campbell shoes were really hot and all the bloggers wore them and they kind of look like roller skate with the really thick wooden heel. They're kind of like that black, but mine had laces up the front. So they're a sandal. I still wear them. So I was wearing all of that together and I walked up and she's like, you can't get in and I always have backup. But this day I had two friends with me and the one girl that came with me hadn't seen her husband in so long that I was more concerned about her getting in and her having her backups and making sure everything was okay with her that I totally neglected myself. She had to wear her backup sneakers. So I had no other shoes in the car. And I sped back to the hotel room changed my shoes, somehow miraculously, I made it all the way back just in time before count. And I was frazzled, I was shaking because if you don't make it in the door by nine o'clock, then they lock you in that room until 10.30, 10.45, maybe they'll start processing again at 11 and then you're not in there until 12 o'clock sometimes. You're up at six o'clock getting ready, you're supposed to get in there, they're supposed to start processing at eight, and here it is almost one o'clock in the afternoon and you haven't even see, seen your loved one yet and visit is over at three no matter what. They don't give you extra time because you came in late, it's always done over at three. So I was all frazzled, I'm wearing my closed toed shoes, changed my whole entire outfit because it would have looked ridiculous with sneakers. So I literally just put on sweatpants, a long sleeve t-shirt and sneakers. And I was comfortable that day, so that's fine. So I go back and I'm frazzled and something happened when she was processing me. It was something with my paperwork. I needed to go back in the room and refill out my paperwork for some reason. I can't remember exactly why. And so I was like, oh, I was like, I'm just so frazzled today. I'm so anxious because of what just happened. And she looks at me and she takes a deep breath and she says, don't worry, we'll get through this together. And I just felt a wave of relaxation go down my body. And I looked at her and I said, Thank you. And then she realized what just happened. An officer took over. And she was like, ma'am, you can go through the metal detector now. And she turned back into the cop. But for a split second, we were on an even playing field. And we were just talking human compassion and kindness to human compassion and kindness. We had a moment. 
and I live for those moments. So thank you, Officer Trouble. Thank you all for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this story. If you have any stories that you want to share with me, I would love to tell them. Just put them in the comments or email them to strongprisonwives at gmail.com. You guys keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you. Lots of love for my work. Love you.